Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, Bertha! Bertha, you in the kitchen? Yeah, Mrs. Norton. I'm basting the pot roast. Mm. Oh, it smells wonderful. Mm, onions. And I give you a taste on a spoon. Mm. Oh, how about another taste? No, no, no. One taste is all you have. It's after six o'clock. And while you are here, I scold you. Why? I noticed last week you sent Mr. Norton's shirts out. I can do the shirts, too. Oh. And they last longer. And you have fewer buttons to sew on. And we save money. Well, I tell you what, I'll make a deal with you. I'll give you the money you save on the laundry. And I make a deal with you. If you let me do the shirts, I pay the money back. Shake. Shake. Oh, Bertha, what would I have done to, without you? Well, I guess I'd better go out and tuck the baby in. Besides, I can't survive hanging around another second with this pot roast. I'm drooling so I'll float away. The roast in the house. You sing, Bertha? Yeah, yeah, I sing, I sing. <laughs> it does not sound so good, but I sing. Bertha, I sing too, but I am considerate. I sing inside. <laughs> that is because you do not know how to sing outside, Fritz. You are jealous with me. Morgentlich leuchtend im Oh, it so happens, as the Americans say, you are jealous of me. Oh, Papa, always correcting. I speak very good English. <laughs> and you don't sing so good. <laughs> the post patrost understands what I say. Put down that spoon, Fritz. I wash it afterwards. Put it down. No taste. See who that is. Please? If you see who that is, I tell you, please, afterwards. Women, they think that men was created just to do for them what they do not like to do for themselves. All right. I open the door. Tucker here. Mr. Tucker, come in. It is no night for standing outside. No, I'm bringing your milk cans, Fritz. Going to bring it up to the barn for you, but I've seen the light in the kitchen and your profile, so I thought I'd come in the back way and hand over to you myself. Uh, come inside the door. There's no right for standing outside. Well, I ain't aiming to ha horn in on you at dinner hour. There's no such thing as horning in when you're invited. Then uh, don't mind if I do step inside. <coughs> uh, well, these New England winters are sure getting bad. Come into the kitchen, Mr. Tucker. Bertha, we have company. Oh, Mr. Tucker, your nose, it looks so blue. And your ears, they look so red. Sit down here. Yes, uh, don't mind if I do, ma'am. <coughs> Uh, what are you cooking that there pot? Gives off a smell that would revive the dead. <laughs> Is it pot roast? <laughs> it set me. Uh, saliva going like a brook after the spring thaw. My mouth is running full of juice. I can hardly speak. <laughs> you want the taste? No, ma'am. Thank you. I, uh, matter of fact, uh, better get myself home. Smell this pot roast to set my stomach to thinking it's time to eat. Sure do wish till I wish to home. Your sister is away. Oh, been away a couple of days. Then you are all alone. Oh, I can take care of myself. Oh, no man can take care of himself, independent character or no. Tucker ain't a man. I be an institution. Now, I'll take a bite out of that wind and get home to cook myself a poached egg for dinner. A poached egg is no dinner for an institution like you, Mr. <laughs> Tucker. You stay right where you are. And have dinner with us. Oh. Yeah, Bertha, for once she has a good idea. I take your coat. Stay right where you are. You mean to say you're inviting me to break bread with you? That is what we ask. You know something, folks? When you first come here, I was kind of leery of you. I, I don't care for strangers. East Brook's got enough of its own to take care of. But uh, sure do must admit you got away about you. Fritz here's got away with animals. And man, I, I never did smell a pot roast that smelled so good. What's more, you know I like you. So, here you are, Fritz. Here's my coat. My teeth are grinding with expectation. <laughs> what a nice speech, Mr. Tucker. We are glad you stay. Well, it's sure being kind of an occasion. You mind if I wash up for dinner? Right through that door on the left. I'm going to 
Come and eat your table with clean hands for you. What more can you ask of unexpected company, hey? <laughs> such a funny man. I have never in all the world met such a man as he is. You have never met a real Yankee before, Mama. Mr. Tucker, he's a real Yankee. I like Yankees. Fritz, suddenly I think. What do you think? We have no sense. What are we doing inviting Mr. Tucker to dinner? He's cold and he's hungry and he's alone. Three good reasons, Mama. Yeah, but this is not our house, this is not our kitchen, this is not our patrost. Three better reasons. And Mr. Tucker, he's not even our friend or our neighbor. He belongs to young Nortons, not to Fritz and Bertha. Yeah, I see what you say. I have no sense. My heart is so sorry for the little old man that I invite him, but I have no right to invite him. I could kick myself. Usually you are right, but with pleasure I tell you this time you are wrong. It is different with this house. What is different? The young Nortons. They would be very upset if we did not feel this house were our home. I do not like to take advantage. Because the young Nortons are different from other people does not mean I should take advantage. Listen, Fritz. In the old country, we had a girl to help me. So I know what it is. But in this country, we are the servants. And I must not allow myself to forget. Yeah. Perhaps I took advantage. Perhaps you are right. Perhaps. Ach, Bertha, I do not know. I am so comfortable here. It is almost as, as if is it were our own home. As close as can be and not be. What do we do now? Mr. Tucker is here. Ach, such a dumb I am. Well, got my hands all scrubbed down to the bone, combed my hair and used the back of my hand, but I combed it. Here I am, spit and polished. <laughs> and very handsome. And yeah, just smell that pot roast. That Delilah of mine, she ain't got no imagination when it comes to cooking. I uh, say, it could be, ma'am. You'd, uh, you'd give my sister a few lessons. I'm getting so tired of pork and beans and corned beef and cabbages and such like stuff. You know, I, I could just curl up and perish. Well, look who's here, Mr. Tucker, as I live and breathe. <laughs> what do you mean by sneaking in the back way, not even saying hello to me? Well, evening, ma'am. I, evening. You know, I wasn't coming in here at all. Till my nose got a whiff of this here pot roast. Mm, my <laughs> nose has been whiffing it for so long, it's practically whiffed off. How's Lala? Oh, well, she had to be off to Hartford. Oh. Got some relatives down there, and niece, not feeling well. Oh. Couldn't be better herself, but she's been away the last few days. Well, then, Bertha, why don't you ask Mr. Tucker to stay for dinner? Well, Fritz and I was... It's uh... settled. Mr. Tucker, you will stay for dinner. I... Just got a previous invite, ma'am. My uh, shirt sleeves here's already rolled up. <laughs> and I'm sitting here, waiting like a trout, eyeing a red fly. I Mrs. See. Norton, uh, Mr. Tucker, he had such a hungry look, and his sister is in Hartford, and the poor man, he, he, he has never tasted a pot roast before. Oh. Uh, not like mine, anyway. Mm -hmm. So Fritz and I, we, we took the liberty of inviting him Took the liberty of inviting him, Bertha. If you hadn't, he probably would have taken the liberty himself. Hey! Hey! Did anybody greet the man who came to dinner? David, hello! Oh, 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 well, hello, Mr. Tucker, Howdy. Fritz, and Bertha. Quit choking me, will you, before I beat the daylight out of you. I'd shake hands with you, only my wife is clinging to me like a vine. And the cow, she gave 21 quarts today, Mr. Norton. Mm, isn't she talented? Let's give that young woman a blue ribbon, Fritz. What do you say? I have already given her a good pat where she likes it most. Mm, Bertha, what is that that I smell? I do not smell anything. You do not smell anything much, you don't. It's a pot roast, son. Got myself an invite to dinner. You, uh, you did? I hung around the kitchen, looks as if I lost my last friend, down in the mouth like down the Grand the Canyon. Well, what do you know? <laughs> I look so soulful and sad and wizened that your Bertha here took pity and gave me an invite <laughs> to dinner. <laughs> yeah, I must apologize, Mr. Norton, but I, I forgot myself. The first sensible thing Bertha's done. Don't you think, David? Well, confidentially, I would say, just offhand, that the woman is starting to show some sense. Uh, 
Don't you think she could show a little more sense? No. Well, maybe if we gave her a little uh, boost in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Do you think you could look a little uh, down in the mouth? Down in the mouth. Now, let me see. How do I look down in the mouth? Here, here. Now, take a look at this one. How does it look now? Am I down in the mouth now? Does that look kind of down in the mouth? Well, now, let me see. I think you could look a little more weasened. On the edges. Weasen. Now, let's see. Which edges? All right. All right. Now, That's let's see. Good. All right. I'm weasen around the edges. How's that? Now, I'm Beautiful. Weasen. Beautiful. It's the best weasen I've ever seen. I like seen. that, Bertha. If I, I were cooking weasen. dinner on the stove, you were looking like that, I'd invite you to dinner right Would away. Would you hold me up, darling? Hold me up. I'm <laughs> weakening with hunger. You're healthy. Hold me up. Bertha, can you I'm not starving. take a hint? Yeah, Fritz. I can take a hint. You take a hint. Then you take a hint. You wish I take it? This is my kitchen, Fritz. I take the hint. Then hurry up. Mr. Norton, he looks wizened. Mr. Tucker's down in the mouth. Yeah, look I'm getting weak holding Mr. Norton up. Help save me. I'm stuck. Mr. and Mrs. Norton, Mr. Tucker and Mr. Fritz, <laughs> I should like very much if you would give me the pleasure of joining me in dinner with my pot roast. With your pot roast. Uh, on one condition. Dinner must be. In the kitchen. In the kitchen. Okay, naturally. Okay, now, naturally. Mama, now, you see, here with the Nortons, it is different. Different? Uh, different from what? Different, uh, better. Like a new world. When you're adding up those friendly services that make the days brighter, don't forget Coke at the movies. It's nice to be able to treat your companion to refreshment. It's pleasant to be able to enjoy the pause that refreshes if there's a line waiting for seats. For then you can wait refreshed. Say, uh, Mr. King, that Bertha and Fritz sure is fine folks. Gosh dang it, the way they invited me in for that pot roast. Well, it ain't the pot roast so much, it's the spirit. Yes, sir, it's, it's the spirit that went into it. Yes, I know what you mean, Mr. Tucker. They've got generous spirits. That's uh, that's cause they suffered a lot. They know what it means to be hungry and cold and, and lonesome, too. Not that I'm demeaning the pot roast itself, mind you. Gosh, almighty, that was the tastiest vittles I had in a long day. Uh, foreign cooking, I guess you call it. Uh, makes Yankee cooking look sick. Uh, know what I'm going to do? No, I never know what you're going to do, Mr. Tucker. I'm going to get my sister Delilah to take a few lessons from Bertha. Take a few lessons in other things, too. It shouldn't hurt her none. Delilah's all uh, dried up in her heart. Lived too long by herself and for herself. That, that's what, me too, that's what's wrong with us. No, sir, I, I never forget a kindness. And those young Nortons is kind from the word go. I'm an old man, they're, they're mighty good neighbors for an old man to have. Good neighbors for a young man to have too, Mr. Tucker. Huh? What young man? Well, I had young Jimmy in mind. Oh, oh, that young man. Huh? He's got me stumped. He's a wild boy, him. Lots of good stuff into him, but a lot of stuff that's not so good neither. Well, I guess that could be applied to just about all of us, Mr. Tucker. Anyway, drop in on Monday. Let's see what goes with Jimmy. Now, as I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, Whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes, and ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. The parts of Claudia and David on this program were played by Catherine Bard and Paul Crabtree. The entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.